hello. Time for another Walking Dead podcast. Though I've heard that this is actually more of a vlog than a podcast. I don't know. I've heard video blogs being called both podcast and vlog. I prefer the term podcast just because I like saying it better. So, whatever. Anyway, Walking Dead this week. Daryl-centric. And that's what we're going to talk about. And I would love to hear your views on it. And... I don't know. You got something you want me to review? Want me to do some unboxing? If I can do it, I will. Um, I don't have a ton of money. So, but, you know. Let me know what you want to see. I will be doing an unboxing soon of the new Scarlet Witch outfit from Hot Topic. I'm very excited. Um, but I have to wait for it to get here. So. Anyway, I know. Notebook as usual. Walking Dead, Daryl-centric episode, it's called Find Me, which, if you've seen it, was actually written on the note he left for Leah. Um, to be completely honest, I didn't feel this a very strong episode. I think for a Daryl-centric episode, it really could have been stronger. It did not really propel the story in any way. I know showrunners have said that the Leah storyline is not over. So, we'll see, um, hopefully, right? But I really feel for a Daryl-centric episode, and there really haven't been that many of them, they could have given him a better and stronger storyline, especially one that might propel the story forward, knowing that they only have so much time left. Uh, so, that's just my opinion on it. And I do really hope there is some kind of payoff later on for this episode. And like the showrunners have said, Leah's not gone entirely. Um, so maybe that it does play into the bigger story, but it really it felt like an empty episode, to be honest. It didn't conclude anything. It just brought up more questions, and it didn't... I don't know. I know these bonus episodes are meant to be character-driven. They are meant to be bottle episodes, you know, each set of characters by itself, basically. And I think that might help in the long run. It might not. Uh, we'll have to wait and see until the 11th season premieres. Which I do not know when that will be. Does anyone know when that's going to be? I want to say it'll probably be in the fall. It usually premieres in the fall, but we'll see. I didn't really feel the relationship with Leah was very in character for Daryl. I know Norma Reedus said he was very nervous about that. He feels very protective of Daryl, being Daryl for so many years now. And uh, he says he just knows how Daryl would act and react to certain situations and certain people. And so he's very, very protective of that. And I'm just like, but I don't know. It just didn't really feel like something Daryl would do. I mean... I don't know. The man's been basically alone for years, so maybe. And but I don't know. It just it didn't feel very in character to me. And so I don't know. I guess Norm Reedus is happy about it. So and Daryl is he is. We know that Daryl's been pretty much out of the dating game since the apocalypse began. He's had some flirting going on with Carol and Connie. And even Beth there for a while. I think Beth is way too young for him. But she had a crush on him. <laughs> but uh, everything failed. Except that relationship with Carol. Which this episode did also explore a little bit. I have been referring to this, this episode as Daryl and Carol's big adventure. Because in many ways that's kind of what it is. <laughs> but, you know, Daryl's been a loner his whole life. He's never really had, at least as far as we know, any real relationships in terms of romance. And I think this this group of people that he's been with all these years, those are the deepest friendships he's ever had. I mean, this is all just fan conjuncture, but this might be. And, you know, these people have turned into his family. And I think perhaps is why he doesn't want to take that extra step with Carol. He's afraid of losing his family. And, I mean, that's quite obvious, because what is he doing when the, in all these flashbacks? He's still looking for Rick, even though it's been a couple of years, probably. We aren't quite sure when these flashbacks happened in the, in the time jump, 
but he keeps looking. He hasn't given up, and I don't think he really has even now. He's just realized, I have to move on. I have to take care of my people. You know, he's been left with Judith and RJ, and even though he doesn't really see himself as a father figure, he's got no choice now. He has to. He has to step up. He has to be Rick, which Rick didn't really want to be the leader either, but someone's got to do it. And in many ways, I think Daryl's realized, you know, this is what needs to be done. This is what I need to do. And he's doing it. And he's doing fine. I mean, look at him. <laughs> uh, if he could just kind of move on a little bit. <laughs> now, I've always loved the whole Daryl and Carol relationship. They love each other. They hate each other. They're best friends. They're enemies. You know, it goes on back and forth, back and forth. Ultimately, they will do anything for one another. Absolutely. I don't know that it will ever turn into romance. I know a lot of people want it to. But I think their relationship is deeper than friendship. It's even deeper than a romance. It's this level of trust and confidence that you just don't really find in a lot of people. And I think they know that. But that trust and that confidence has been broken because of Carol's actions. I mean, you know, she she's let Negan loose. She, her actions caused Connie to disappear. You know, it, I mean, Negan, at least, she had reason to kill Alpha. But, and, and Daryl knows Alpha had to die. Absolutely. It was the only way anyone could move on. But, you know, it's hard because Carol's forging her own path. It's a path that's been fueled by grief. And I think a part of her is like, she wants to take a step back. She wants to find that relationship she had with Daryl all these years. She wants to know that Daryl still has her back. And I think she knows that he does. Ultimately, he does. Even though he isn't quite ready to forgive and forget and move on. He still cares for her very much. They've been through too much. They've been through hell and back together. They, there's no turning back on her. And he knows that. But he's not ready to let her in yet. And I think in some ways she wants him to let her in. And he ain't ready. He ain't ready to do that yet. Their relationship is currently broken in many ways. And it is Carol's fault. And she admits it. And she knows that. I think in some ways I know that uh, Melissa McBride said Carol is inserting herself into Daryl's private life and trying to make herself like a third wheel trying to make him look at her make him talk to her and he's just not ready he doesn't he doesn't want to move on yet I think he just wants to wallow <laughs> Daryl's pretty good at wallowing but I think part of the problem is Daryl's a pretty good listener but he's not a good talker and he doesn't really have many that he trust to talk to either and Carol had been that person for him for many years but now some of that is broken and he he's not ready to fix it I think part of him wants to but he's not ready I know I've been repeating myself aren't I <laughs> yeah you know I don't think she wants to forget and to what happened because but she's looking to be redeemed She's looking for Daryl and the others to forgive and forget, basically. And Daryl is not ready to do that. Maybe some of the townspeople are, the Alexandriites, maybe they are, because they don't know her like he does. Because in so many ways, Carol's kind of a selfish person. And I think part of that is because she's lost so much and so many people. And Daryl understands that, I think, because he's also lost so much. But they just have to deal with things their own way. And they're not ready to deal with them together yet. Now, there, there's that relationship with Leah, which is throwing that wedge in there with Carol and Daryl. I felt that was kind of a forced relationship, to be honest. But uh, it is definitely throwing that wedge in. It, it, that's what I was reading about it. And, and I thought, you know, that's a pretty accurate uh, description of it. And I just, I don't know. I think Carol knows all about it. 
But I don't understand why, because did Daryl really want to talk about it to anybody? Daryl's not the kind of guy to open up, but maybe he did. And Carol's, of course, the person he would go to about that, the most definitely. There aren't many left of their old gang, and so... <laughs> now, what I do not like, though, about what they have done with The Walking Dead is this whole spin-off business with Carol and Daryl. That's the... I think part of the appeal of The Walking Dead is nobody's ever safe. Nobody. As is evidence. I mean, they killed off Carl. Carl should have been the safest one of all because in the comics, he's the one telling the story in the future. So he definitely should have been the safest one of all. But they killed him off. So I don't really like that they announced this spinoff because that kind of marked Carol and Daryl as safe forever. And I don't know if that was the wisest idea to tell us, hey, these two are safe. Because that obviously that means others are not. But how many people are really going to make it to the end? <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. We do. We are getting a bonus size season 11. I'm not quite sure how many episodes. Usually the seasons are split. 11 episodes in the fall and 11 in the spring. But I'm not quite sure what they're planning this time. I, they might be doing that again. Who knows? Uh, that's what they usually do. And I wouldn't really call that bonus size. It's like when they say there's a bonus length episode and then you watch it like on AMC and really it just means there's like 15 million commercials and it's not really, it's like two minutes longer and you're like, really? For that reason alone, I really like watching it on streaming instead. I do wonder though if this whole Carol and Daryl spinoff business could actually be a red herring and it doesn't exist. <laughs> And the views have been dropping like crazy for a show that once was the powerhouse of AMC. And I mean, Walking Dead had the same kind of ratings a broadcast show does. And for a cable show, that's pretty dang unusual. And this past episode had less than 3 million viewers. They've lost 75% of their viewers. And I do feel that a lot of that had to do with dragging that Negan storyline out. <sighs> I mean, I get why they had to do that storyline, because it's very important in the comics, but they dragged it out for far too long, and people got fed up and they left. And I just, I don't know. I think since the time jump, this really revitalized the show, and I think a lot of people haven't realized that they're not giving it a chance and I, I really encourage people to give it another chance to go back and watch some of the newer episodes that after the time jump and I think you'll realize you know this show has really popped back up it's really become what it was in many ways it's about the characters it's about their survival about their family and you know I did that a while back I went and watched some of the older episodes one, I've forgotten how violent those suckers were. <laughs> but, uh, and I, I have to admit, I'm really glad they got rid of so much of the violence because I'm not in it for the violence. I know a lot of people are. And if that's your thing, okay, that's your thing. But I prefer these newer stories where it's more character driven. It's more about the people. It's about the town of Alexandria. It's about moving forward. And of course, there's going to be a big bad. There's going to be a villain. There's going to be the walkers. We're going to have to kill the walkers. We're going to have to kill or at least get rid of the big bad because that is the walking dead after all. But I really encourage you if you have given up on the walking dead to give another chance to go and watch, say, I think it's season nine. They did the jump in. Season 8, do go back and watch the new stuff. And I think you'll find it's really revitalized itself. And it's really become a much better show, in my opinion. That time job was great for the show. I was very leery of it, but I think it helped a lot. And as evidenced by this episode with Daryl, we are getting to know a little bit what happened in those past, those few years of the time jump with through flashbacks. And... Some of them are good, some of them are not. Like the Michonne flashbacks, I really, uh, that was a while ago last season. I really didn't feel were good. 
But they did move the story forward, whereas these new flashbacks don't seem to have. But it has been said the Leah storyline's not over, so maybe it will. Maybe it's more than we realize. And that'd be good, I think. I think it'd be very interesting to have uh, Leah, Connie, and Carol. You know, that's going to be very difficult for uh, poor Daryl there. But uh, that could be interesting. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's see here. And then we're going to conclude this with Carol's dire quote. Our luck has run out, you and me. And I think that holds more than one meaning. Obviously, the show is ending. But and I feel ultimately the luck is running out for Alexandria. In how many are going to be left standing? How many are going to have to forge a future by themselves? I think it's going to be rather interesting. I really kind of hope they end the series with like a flash forward so we can see kind of what happens, especially to the kids. But we'll see. I mean, they've been telling the story of a flashback, so why not end the series with a flash forward? But let's hope... That the Walking Dead's luck gets a little better because if it doesn't, I don't think there's going to be that Carol and Daryl spinoff. So, what do you think? What did you think of the episode? What did you come away with it? I don't know. I didn't really like the episode much, but, you know, obviously I'm not the only one with the viewers so way down. But really and truly, I encourage you to go back and watch some of the newer stuff after the top jump. It's a good show. It is. And I, every time it comes back on air, I remember how much I really like it. So, really, go back, watch some of the newer episodes, catch up. You got time. You do. I mean, half the world's still in lockdown. What more do you got to do? All right. So, remember, be nice to custom service personnel. All right? And remember, especially if you're in lockdown, watch some Walking Dead. Have a good night.